This is not the time to get distracted. And this is not the time to go off course. This is not the time to lose your focus. Got a word to do for the Lord. And you cannot afford to lose your way. You come too far from where you started. So please don't let the time you so be wasted on things that you later regret, wishing you never had. Once you realize it wasn't worth it, your destiny is too important to give up for anything. the trumpet, sound the alarm, it's time for the clarion call. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Clarion Call Broadcast. I'm your host, Minister Jonathan Simmons, and we thank God for those of you who have decided to join us here on at Lands Incredible Radio, WIGO 1570 on the AM dial. We also thank God for those of you who are listening to us on your mobile device. If you do not have the TuneIn application, please, ma'am, please sort of download it because it is absolutely free. 
and put in WIGO 1570 in the search engine. And voila, you'll find us broadcasting to you right here and right now. <laughs> we are loading up our Facebook Live video. It should be on my page in just a second. If you do want to see it now, you can go to the Clarion Call Show page. And we are actually up live on Facebook right now, even as we speak. You know, it's funny. We uh, we got a chance to, like everyone else, uh, I didn't watch. You know, every every year I, t- I tell myself I really not to watch much of the president's inaugural address, no matter who it is, only because uh, my thinking is, um, from what I've seen over time, is that really it kind of really doesn't matter uh, who's there, what party they're in. In many cases, they will continue on and do the same things that we saw in the previous in the previous generation. So it's just interesting to me that, um, you know, looking at uh, last night and looking at Donald Trump and his remarks, it just, you know, if we're really (laughs) if we really look at this thing the right way, you will find a situation where you had a lot of the same things that you heard from the previous president, president, which I find very, very interesting. Um, but now wrapped in this new package of an older, and I don't want to really make this too much of a racial thing, but an older Caucasian man, suddenly things like government spending, oh, that, that's okay. <laughs> uh, he talked about spending $1 trillion. But anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell too much on, uh, on that. What I want to talk to you guys about really is about what do we do as believers? Okay. When we are faced with situations where there is, uh, struggle, where there is, um, problems what are we doing i mean are we are we standing on the word or are we are we you know just caught up in the fear and it's funny because when i came in uh when i came in today uh i thought about the scripture in the 27 psalm actually i was looking asking the lord to help me to bring you guys a word of encouragement today and as he always does he brought me to the 27th Psalm. Now, I know a lot of you people are asking, hey, where's your buddy? Where's your, your pal, the Lady Pink Panther? She has been, she's actually on the phone right now. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and patch you guys into her in just a moment. Of course, we're going to go to the announcement that tells you a little bit about her. And then uh, she's going to join us in just a moment. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Women Helping Women. That's the passion of Women to Women and Associates, a faith-based nonprofit 501c3 organization created for the complete advancement of all women, especially those in crisis from domestic violence, substance abuse, and homelessness. The primary purpose is to be the source of educational and informational empowerment to all women. Founder and CEO April Lanham Sentmanot turned her pain into purpose. She overcame addiction and domestic violence with the love of Christ and now helps other women do the same. They create the perfect environment for the cycles of addiction, domestic violence and abuse, poverty, incarceration, and lack of education in the lives of all women to not only be broken, but to be renewed with spiritual health, positive emotional well-being, educational enrichment, employability standards, and personal parental programs to transform our clients to well-balanced, educated, spiritually sound members of the community. They are a place of hope, health, healing, and happiness for all women. For more information, contact the founder and CEO, April Alain Sentmanot. Or go to www.womentowomenandassociates.net. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Motivational Moments with me, your spiritual soldier, bringing you an inspiring source of empowering words that stimulate your spirit, renew your mind, and activate your purpose. I want you all to be encouraged this morning. Why is it so hard for us as Christians to be obedient to God's word and what God speaks to our spirit? We question the tasks that God gives us because they are usually outside our comfort zones and limiting to our education, our experience, or our financial status. God challenges our faith, but why, you may ask? Be encouraged, because God's words tells us that the just shall live by faith. If we are faithful Christians and are obedient in our purposes, we cannot be afraid to accept God's challenges to our faith, to our lives. These challenges, they grow us as individuals in His grace and empower us and other people to seek God and trust Him even more. It doesn't matter who you are. God will test your faith. He will expand your territory. And while doing so, we must get ready. 
The Lord has planted unlimited potential inside each and every one of us who he has chosen. He has equipped us to carry out our purposes. He has qualified us to conquer every challenge that we face. But we must be faithful into who God has transformed us to be and having no fear when doing so. Once you become connected to your unlimited potential, your obedience must be fortified in the truth in God's word. Be encouraged because he needs us to be strong and courageous in him in order for us to be vessels for the kingdom of God in service to his people. Obedience is an essential part of the Christian faith. And even Jesus was obedient unto his death on the cross. Philippians 2 and 8 says, Our obedience is a trust and sign of our love to God, not just to our duty. So how can we be motivated to trust God even more and fortify our obedience? I challenge you, I encourage you to look back over your life and remember when, where, how and why God rescued and saved you, gave you a new life and a new you in him. This week's segment is definitely and most wholeheartedly dedicated to my father, Mr. B. May God cover him and protect him in his love. And until next week, my fellow soldiers, be encouraged, be empowered, be inspired to be a blessing. When you need a vehicle for your business, you need superior performance and quality service. You need Bellamy Strickland Commercial Trucks. They're in McDonough, Georgia, just south of Atlanta, and can meet your Isuzu, GMC, and Chevrolet commercial truck needs. Their friendly staff will help you find the fleet trucks and vehicles you need at a price you can afford. Their 35 years of experience and commitment to quality have earned them the loyalty of customers throughout the U.S. Check out the website at www.bellamystricklandtrucks.com or call John Winter, the general manager, at 770-954-3017. Bellamy Strickland Commercial Trucks, the truck capital of Georgia. Hi there, my name is Tim Mullen, General Manager of Pinstrikes Family Entertainment Center in Stockbridge. Now is the perfect time to schedule your holiday party. Big or small, we cater them all. Two hours of bowling, shoe rental, choice of one of our freshly prepared spreads, like the pasta meal or southern barbecue meal. Your holiday party is waiting for you at Pinstrikes. Pinstrikes Entertainment Center, 3478 Mount Zion Road, Stockbridge. Call 770-302-0786 or online at pinstrikes9.com. Bible scripture tells us in Psalms 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and doing of his holy word. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's interesting, again, as we talked about a little bit earlier in April, touched on, you know, being courageous and following your purpose. That really was what uh, I believe the Lord is giving me to tell you today. Going back to this classic psalm, one that is a is been quoted numerous, numerous times uh, over the course of Scripture, uh, over the course of biblical teaching. And when you you look at this, when you just study this for a second, I think it's very, very important to look at this, especially during this time that we have right now. You know, this is a time where there's a lot of uproar. Uh, there's a lot of nervousness. I say a lot of fear. You know, I think that uh, people on both sides of the aisle, both Republicans and Democrats, if they would tell the truth, are, are right now very fearful about the gentleman that is now president of the United States, Donald Trump. And the only thing I would advise us really at this time is to really we, we need to get back to just the plain old Christian teachings. You know, uh, and I understand, you know, normally we come to you and I, I do believe this is inspiration, but normally we try to hit you with a lot of extra motivation and 
and, you know, try to give you some things that will make your day better. And I, I do believe that Scripture does do this, but sometimes we have to get to just the rudiments of basic Bible teaching. And the realities are this nation is in trouble unless we repent as a nation. I mean, white and black people, uh, Republicans and Democrats, but especially when I look at what happens every time we have a changing of the guard, how partisan politics trumps integrity, uh, <laughs> play on words there, and trumps credibility. Yeah, I listened last night uh, to some portions of the speech. Like I said, again, I just took the excerpts and I said to myself, it's interesting that this Republican pro-business candidate is now proposing government spending for infrastructure of one trillion dollars. Now, unless, uh, you know, I've kind of fallen off into the deep end here. It does appear to me that the previous president was proposing that same thing. As a matter of fact, the pre previous president launched a bill, talked about work ready projects. So now my question is, what's the big difference? Why took why were there so many shots taken at the previous president? We look at the health care, the health care bill. Everyone said this was a bad bill. And everybody was going around to repeal it. Now it appears that there is nothing there to replace it. So now the question is, was it ever about really taking care of the people as politicians claim? Or was it really about, is our party going to win? Do we like this person? Is, are they white? Are they black? Are they male or female? And if they're not, then we're not going to work with them. We're not going to help them. We don't care about the people. And we heard Republicans say this during the Obama administration. They said they would rather see the president fail and the country go in the tank just so they could get power back. Now, what's more traitorous than that? And, of course, when you hear these types of things, when you see this, this strikes fear into the hearts and minds of everybody. But I'm going to read the 27th Psalm for you here. So you guys can get this thing back in your hearts and mind. Those of you who are fearful, those of you who are nervous, those of you who are wondering, is this guy going to take us into World War III? Is he going to send this country into a depression? You got to get all that out of your mind. This is what the Psalm 27 Psalm, this is why it's so powerful. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be comforted. One thing I've asked from the Lord, and that shall I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Then he goes down and says, for in the day of trouble, or the King James says, in the time of trouble, he will hide me. It says in the New American Standard, he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent. He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Are you in trouble right now? Well, it goes on. It says, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice and be gracious to me and answer me. <laughs> Some of you may be like me. You might get in a, a dark place of depression. Some of the things you've done, bad decisions you've made. Now you find yourself in a spot where, you know, things are kind of jacked up. You find yourself, I mean, thoroughly behind the eight ball. And you're wondering, will the Lord hear you? It says here in the scriptures, when I cry with my voice, be gracious to me and answer me. So God is telling you, David is asking the question that we ask. Well, here's what the Lord says. When you, when David said, when you seek, said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I will seek. Many of you have been praying for a long time. But I just want to encourage you that the Lord hears our prayers. Matter of fact, here's the cool thing. In Romans, we're actually told to understand that when we pray, the Holy Spirit himself with groanings and utterings that can't be understood, makes our petition made on unto God. And the Spirit of God, which knows the minds of God, creates these answers to our prayer. And even the Scriptures tell us how Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. And what does he do? He is constantly making petitions for us. I know sometimes you, you feel like, man, I done prayed this prayer a gazillion times. I'm fed up. My life is just seems like it's on this, this like the, what do you call it, the little hamster wheel. I'm encouraging you to pray on saints of God. Pray on people. Don't let the stresses and the problems of this nation, even in your house. Some of you here watching me, you got drama in your house. Some of you might have marital problems. Some of you, your kids done gone off the rails. Some of you are grandparents who are now, after raising your own children, 
You now have to raise your children's children in a time where you thinking I'm going to retire. I'm trying to shut it down. I got to worry about running around after kids all over again. And you're wondering to yourself, God, will I have the strength to do it? I just want to encourage you. My mother went through the same thing with me and my daughter and my brothers and sisters, some of their daughters and kids. So my mom lived till she was 79 years old. And all of us are here. We're alive and well, and we've made it. So I want to encourage you, grandparents, hold on. God hears you. Continue to go before him in prayer. I just want to encourage you today, people, don't, don't, let, let's not be spiritual punks. You know, Bible tells us in scriptures, quit ye like men. In other words, let's, let's bow up here. I mean, we're not, we are, if we are claiming that we are servants of the most high God, you know, that's a very lofty term. If we like to run around and say we're children of God, well, who is God? God is the creator of the universe. Everything that we see and everything that we don't see is made by God Almighty. So who are you praying to? If you're praying to God Almighty, then we are going to have to ask God the same thing that that man asked when Jesus said, hey, do you want your daughter to be healed? The man said, Lord, I believe. But then he said, help my unbelief. That's what we have to do. We have to get back to saying, Lord, listen, this this thing that we got here in this country, my financial situation, my, my home situation, I, you know, only you can deliver me. And I believe you can deliver me, kind of, maybe, sort of. But I need you to give me that extra oomph of faith so that I may, in fact, be able to latch on and be able to wait. Because remember now, this is the other key about receiving a blessing from the Lord. Sometimes it doesn't come right on the minute when we want it. I'm just being real. We we don't want to really talk about that too much. But sometimes God's prayers, our prayers, the answer comes at a time that we thought maybe God forgot about us. But this is what David said at the end of this 27th Psalm. He said, for my mother, my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my foes. Do not deliver me over to the desire of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. Some of you are suffering from a little hateration. <laughs> there are people around you that have you no good at all <laughs> for you in their thoughts or in their schemes. And many of you are thinking to yourself, man, how am I going to, Lord, who's going to deliver me from all of this? Who are going to deliver me from these schemes and plots that people have set up to cause me to stumble and to fall? Well, I'm just again encouraging you to please, ma'am, please, sir. Put your trust in God. Put your hope in him. Do not let the circumstances that you're in cause you to lose hope and to lose faith because God, in fact, loves us. He loves us. He hears our prayers. He knows that we have problems and that are too big for us to handle. That's why he tells us to come to him in prayer. And I just want to encourage you during this time. Don't I mean, don't look at all this stuff that's going on, people, please. Focus on Jesus. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one that started us on this journey, and he's going to carry us all the way through. And it does not matter who is in office. I, I hate to keep beating this thing over the head, but it doesn't matter. And on the flip side, even before, it didn't matter if President Obama was in office. Because as we could see, he could only do so much. At the end of the day, he's only a man, just like you and I are. So I want to encourage you, trust in the Lord and do good. And we finish up this psalm, and this is what it says. He said, David said, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I know sometimes when we like to talk about uh, in the old days, we preach so much heaven, people thought, hey, man, um, hey, man, um, when is this stuff going to come? Do I have to wait to heaven to get all my blessings? David said, if I thought that, I wouldn't have made it because I needed to know I could get some deliverance here in real time on the earth. But this is what he said. He said, see, I knew it. I knew I believed deep down that I would see the goodness of the Lord while I was yet alive. Some of you grandparents, you're going to see your grandchildren get delivered out of all that stuff they're in while you are alive. Some of you parents, some of you mothers have daughters that are hooked up with guys that mean them no good. Some of you, you fathers told your son, hey, man, I know she's the hammer, but stay away from that woman. And now your money's messed up. Things are in trouble. Fathers, I'm telling you, you will see your sons delivered from that crazy situation. Children, 
you're looking and saying, I live in a household of chaos. God's going to deliver you from a situation. But my last encouragement is the end of this, this psalm. It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Here's what the, new, the King James says. It says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So that's my encouragement today, folks. Stay prayed up. Continue to pray. God is not asleep. He's aware that Obama left. He was aware that Trump came. He's aware of all the things that are going on. And I'm here to tell you that God is yet in control. And the same God that kept you all these many years. Remember now, this is not the first time where people thought we had a bad president. People thought that President Obama was a bad president. People thought Reagan was bad. People thought Bush was bad. Clinton was bad. Doesn't matter. God's in control. Hey, guys, remember, it's Wednesday. Hump day. The middle of the week. But... God has got good things in store for you yet. Listen, man, these young cats have uh, brought this music. What I love about gospel music is always ever-changing, always setting up with generation after generation. We got some new guys out there called GI, and they're telling you what I've been telling you. Don't worry, just pray. Remember, if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, please, man, please, sir, get to know him today. Nobody loves you like Jesus. On behalf of everybody here at WIGO and my partner, I like to call her the Spiritual Pink Panther, my buddy, April Land sent me out the spiritual soldier. We say God bless you and have a great day.